Real quick before we begin, I just wanted to bring up the fact that I have a second channel now. As this channel is now focusing on what ifs, I have decided to make a second one in order to focus on gaming. We've got plenty of content over there already, and there's lots more to come out in the future, so give it a watch. Picking up where we left off, we find our trio in a standoff. Ash and Seda easily recognize the grandson of Professor Oak, and with Ash figuring the Pokemon by his side is the evolved form Ghastly, it immediately puts in perspective how far behind Ash already is. The other trainer, no one really knows at all, but judging by her partner, they can tell she's pretty strong too. There isn't much time for pleasantries between the three, as all three of them call for their partner Pokemon to charge at the Squirtle. A low kick, shadow punch, and rapid spin all go flying in. However, the four pr Squirtle protect the one in the center, taking the hits for it. Gary argues with Ash, telling him to get out of the way, but Ash won't allow it, fighting back against this. Unfortunately, not only is Machop unable to do anything to the ghost Pokemon, but the two bickering with each other only allows the red-haired girl to swoop in and get ahead. Once the two realize it, though, both of them quickly get her out of the way. Unfortunately, the infighting results in the Squirtle Squad being able to leave. Gary groans before calling back his partner, which he calls Haunter. He's about to leave, but Ash calls him out. Gary exclaims he's going to catch the leader of that group of Squirtle, and that Ash shouldn't waste his time competing with him on this. Ash argues that Gary shouldn't be counting him out of this. After all, he has two badges now. <laughs> Gary smirks before pulling out his badge case and revealing the four shiny badges within. That shuts up Ash pretty quickly. The red-haired girl, on the other hand, says that it doesn't matter how many badges either have, because if anyone's going to catch that Squirtle, then it'll be her. Both Ash and Gary ask who she thinks she is, to which she introduces herself as Misty. And she's sure a water Pokemon expert like herself won't have any issues. Upon the mention of her type speciality, Seda asks if she happens to know the Sensational Sisters of Cerulean City. To this, Misty states that of course she knows them, because she's the fourth Sensational Sister. This revelation is a surprise to the two Pallet Town boys, as both of them make a point that they don't see anything sensational about her. Misty growls at the two of them, which leads Ash to mention that they weren't so sensational either, since they wouldn't even battle him, and he had to do chores to get his badge. Gary laughs at this, before saying that if that's the case, then Ash shouldn't be calling himself a strong trainer, and with that he takes his leave to find the Squirtle Squad. Misty and Ash are about to go their separate ways as well, when Officer Jenny pulls up to them. She asks if they've seen a ragtag group of Squirtle in the area, to which Ash and Misty both state that they were trying to catch one of them for themselves. Hearing this, Jenny takes them to the police station, before she explains to them that the Squirtle Squad might not be so easy to catch. They're a group of Squirtle that were abandoned by their trainers. So now they run wild and play pranks on the people. She honestly feels bad for them, but she's never able to get to them to put a stop to things. Ash and Misty begin to sympathize with the Squirtle after hearing this. However, this also only gives them more reason to want to find Squirtle in the first place, as the two now want to show Squirtle that not all trainers are bad. The group decides to leave the station after with Brock suggesting they stop in the nearby town for supplies. However, when they reach the town shop, they soon hear people talking about how a trainer has engaged in battle with the Squirtle Squad. Misty and Ash both realize that this might be Gary, and so the two of them race off to try and catch him before it's too late. Sure enough, Gary is the one standing against the Squirtle Squad, his haunter as well as a Nido King by his side. He's attacking relentlessly, but the Squirtle Squad are maneuvering around him with ease, and with attacks that are coordinated to hit Gary's Pokemon hard. Still, Gary's a tough opponent for them, 
And his two Pokemon are nothing to scoff at either. Ash and Misty both figure that if Gary keeps fighting them, then he'll just make them hate humans even more. So Ash and Misty send out Charmander and Starmie to stop them. They call out for him to stop, with their Pokemon getting in the way of the two. Gary asks what the two of them are doing. And so Misty tries to explain how the Squirtle Squad are a group of abandoned Pokemon, and that's why they were acting the way they were. Fighting them was only going to make them hate humans more. However, in a strange twist, Gary says that he already figured all that out. This surprises the two. But Gary states that it was an e easy thing to connect. He figured pranks weren't in their nature. Because that's in his haunter's nature. And it simply didn't feel the same to him in the end. In response to this, Haunter sucks its eyes into its body before spitting them out into its mouth. Ash and Misty then ask why he was fighting them, to which Gary states that it's because he challenged them to a battle, stating that he wanted to see how strong they were. He figured if they didn't like people and decided to go with pranks over something far worse, then he could probably goad them into a fight. They look at the Squirtle Squad, noticing their confusion, both by this revelation, but also by Ash and Misty's actions. Then Officer Jenny shows up. Getting off her bike, she says she heard about the battle and came over as soon as she could. It's explained to her what was going on, and she seems pretty understanding over it. Still, she does say she has a job to do, meaning that she has to take them in. Misty asks what's going to happen to them, to which Officer Jenny says that they'll most likely try and find a way to get them to trust trainers again, before either sending them to Pokemon Breeders, or Professor Oak, or whoever may volunteer. Immediately, Ash and Misty offer to take one of the five, but Officer Jenny says that she isn't sure they will be ready for that. The Squirtle Squad don't seem so sure that they want to go with Officer Jenny, but Gary assures them that it's for the best. Gary specifically crouches down in front of the leader Squirtle. He says that it has potential to be very strong, so he hopes that it doesn't waste that potential wherever it ends up. The Squirtle Squad start to go with Officer Jenny. But the leader Squirtle stops, thinking about what Gary has just said, and how he helped them to become stronger. It's at that moment, it breaks away from the group, going over to Gary. Officer Jenny figures that maybe Gary's words reached Squirtle, and so now it wants to go with him. Gary smirks, before arrogantly exclaiming that of course Squirtle would want to go with him. If it wants to become stronger, then he's the best option for Squirtle to do so. He then asks if Officer Jenny was really alright with it. Officer Jenny thinks for a moment, then she says that if Squirtle truly feels ready to trust trainers, then it can go with him. Misty, Ash, and even Brock then bend down in front of the other Squirtle, asking if they would like to come with them. Each gives it some thought, but all feel uncertain. Officer Jenny says that she appreciates that each of them wants to help the Squirtle, but they can't rush this. When the Squirtle are ready, then they'll seek out trainers. With that, as well as a goodbye between the squad members, the four Squirtle leave with Officer Jenny. Gary begins to leave with Squirtle, but Ash calls him out again. He exclaims that he's going to beat the Vermilion City Gym Leader, and will surpass Gary before he knows it. Gary smirks, before teasing Ash that he might be able to, if Lieutenant Surge decides to give it to him without a battle, then maybe he'd get the badge. With that, he leaves, much to Ash's annoyance. Misty chuckles, before she begins to take her leave as well. When asked where she's going to go, 
Misty states that she's going to continue her journey to become a water Pokemon master. So she's going to do whatever she can to become stronger. Hearing this, Ash asks for a battle. Misty thinks about it, before she decides to agree to the challenge. The battle is a one-on-one, -on -one, with Ash choosing to use his Charmander against Misty's Staryu. The two Pokemon fight fiercely, with Charmander actually putting up a good fight, despite being at a disadvantage. However, moves like Flamethrower and Ember aren't able to do too much to the water type. And so, Misty is the winner in the end. The group chooses to part ways there, but Ash exclaims that he'll beat Misty next time they meet. They continue their journey, reaching a beach. The events of Mystery at the Lighthouse take place here, and nothing much changes. Ash has less Pokemon, so when he catches Krabby, it doesn't go to Professor Oak's lab, meaning he doesn't call the professor. They then meet Bill, and at nightfall, they get to see the giant Dragonite. Team Rocket isn't here though, so nothing happens to Bill's lighthouse. The Dragonite also stays for a while longer than the original. In the morning, they say goodbye to Bill, and continue onwards on their journey. The trip finally pays off as they make it to Vermilion City. Ash, always excited for his next badge, immediately wants to go to the next gym. However, due to his own hunger, the group heads to the Pokemon Center. As they eat their food, they see a trainer come in with a Rattata, who's been badly beaten. It doesn't take long for them to find out that this was the doing of Lieutenant Surge, who is stated to be a ruthless battler. This makes Ash a bit more worried. However, Machop seems certain that it can get the win. In fact, the idea of such a strong opponent makes Machop even more willing to fight. So once everyone finishes eating, they head to the gym. Once they get there, they meet Lieutenant Surge and his two subordinates, who proceed to ridicule Ash and Machop. Ash tries to argue, stating that he and Machop train really hard, so, Lieutenant Surge allows the battle. It'll be a one-on-one -on -one between Machop and Raichu. The battle begins, and Machop tries low kick, only for it to not do much against Raichu. Machop then tries Leer before attacking again, but still Raichu doesn't even flinch. Attack after attack Machop tries, only for Raichu to take them. Then it fires off a Thunderbolt, which sends Machop flying back. Ash calls for Machop to get back in the fight, but Lieutenant Surge's Raichu is relentless. By the time Machop is on its feet again, Raichu begins to pummel Machop constantly with Mega Punch and Mega Kick. Machop manages to get back into it. However, a final body slam finishes off Machop. Lieutenant Surge laughs at Ash, belittling him even more. Ash picks up Machop, and as he's about to leave, he and Machop hear Lieutenant Surge telling him to come back when it evolved. Maybe then, he'll be worth his time. At night, Ash and the gang are in the Pokemon Center, with Machop lying in bed. Nurse Joy enters the room, stating that Machop will be alright, it just needs to rest. Ash then gets up before heading to the door. Seda and Brock ask where he's going, to which Ash says that if he's going to beat Lieutenant Surge, then he needs to train. Seda points out that Machop isn't ready to train yet, to which Ash says that he knows. He'd never force Machop to train in this condition, which is why he's not bringing Machop with him. He'll just train with his other Pokemon that, he leaves. Seda and Brock aren't sure what to do about this. They're glad Ash is actually wanting to train, but they're worried he might push himself too hard. Nurse Joy does bring up something interesting, though, stating that Lieutenant Surge would have reacted the same. 
while Ash heads to the beaches of Vermilion City to train with his other three Pokemon. Nurse Joy brings Brock and Seda away from the chop so it can rest. She then takes them over to a wall, with a picture hanging from it. The picture shows Lieutenant Surge, his Raichu, and a few other people dressed in camo. Nurse Joy then explains that Lieutenant Surge is a hard-working military man. He had served, gaining his title in the war. As a member of the army, he was known for being a strict commanding officer, which is why he is the way that he is in his gym. His two subordinates are training in the, his gym because they look up to him. After all, he saved their lives. However, he wasn't always like this, of course. Everyone has to start somewhere, and she's sure that he had one too. Not too many people know it, but Electric Pokemon saved him during the war, and that's why he trained Electric-type Pokemon. Suddenly, Nurse Joy's Chansey runs in, with a look of distraught. It brings the group to the room Machop was in, only to find that the Fighting-type Pokemon is gone. Immediately, Seda and Brock exclaim that they'll go looking for Machop at once, thinking that it'll since it's recovering, that it couldn't have gotten far. We then cut to Machop, who's gone off into the wilderness. There the fighting type begins to train itself. It does all sorts of exercises, like sprints, and attacking a nearby tree with punches in its low kick attack. Meanwhile, at the same time, Ash and his Pokemon train on the beach. He has Charmander and Krabby fight each other, calling moves like Flamethrower against Water Gun and Scratch against Metal Claw. What Ash doesn't realize is that someone is actually watching him. It's Lieutenant Surge. Cutting back to Machop, Seda actually manages to find him. She tries to get Machop to go back to the Pokemon Center and rest from his injuries. However, Machop refuses. The two argue with each other for a while, but it becomes quickly apparent that Machop is resolute in becoming stronger. It tries to go back to training, but then Seda calls to him again. She then brings out Abra and Bulbasaur, and says that while she might not be much of a battler, maybe she and her Pokemon can help the superpower Pokemon with its training. With that, they begin. Machop's training becomes much harder now. Abra helps with speed training as the Psy Pokemon uses Teleport to evade Machop when it attacks. When it switches sparring partners, Bulbasaur uses his Vine Whips to help Machop train its punches. While they work, Seda wonders if Machop was trying to mimic Raichu's Mega Punch. They continue training like this for a while, but it don't seem to get that far. Then a voice calls out that Machop is doing it wrong. Turning, Seda finds Lieutenant Surge standing there. The lieutenant tells the little lady to step aside and allow a real commander to instruct these drills. For the rest of the night, Lieutenant Surge also trains Machop. His training is far more vigorous than before. Seda's training ideas are kept, but with Lieutenant Surge pushing Machop even harder, soon the fruits of Machop's labor are shown. As while it trains against Abra, it ends up catching it with a much faster move, Bullet Punch. As their training continues through the night, Seda tries to ask Lieutenant Surge why he's helping Machop, after being so harsh to him and Ash. However, the army veteran doesn't give her an answer focusing all in on Machop's training. We cut back to Ash, who is working with his Pokemon as hard as he can. When Krabby and Charmander aren't training against each other, the two both try and fight Gyarados, seeing as it's the strongest member of Ash's team currently. It isn't long before Brock finds Ash. He notices how hard Ash is working his Pokemon, 
and tries to get him to take a break. However, Ash won't do it. He says he can't rest until he and his Pokemon are strong enough to beat Lieutenant Surge. Brock keeps pleading with Ash, but the ten-year-old boy stubbornly refuses each time. Eventually, Brock shouts at him, asking why he's trying to get him and his Pokemon hurt over a loss. Ash finally snaps, yelling at Brock that he doesn't want to be behind everyone anymore. The two fall silent. Nothing but the waves make noise. Even Ash's Pokemon stop fighting. It's at this point that Ash breaks down. He tells Brock that he's tired of being behind. He's been behind Gary since he was a baby. And he's even farther now. Not only that, but Damien, Misty, Lieutenant Surge. He even reminds Brock of his original loss against him. He's tried so hard to improve. But he's just had loss after loss. And if he can't get stronger, then how is he supposed to achieve his dream of becoming a Pokemon Master? Brock comforts Ash in this moment, taking the role he would at home whenever his siblings would get upset. He doesn't argue with Ash. He just gives the ten-year-old time to let out all of his frustrations. When Ash calms down, he thanks Brock, and then says he'll take a break now. Brock smiles, before saying that once Ash and his Pokemon have rested, then he'll help Ash train. After all, his Pokemon might have something that Ash could use to beat Lieutenant Surge. The morning comes, and both Ash and Brock make their way to Lieutenant Surge's gym. At the same time, Seda and Machop make their way there as well. They all get there at the same time. Ash asks what Seda and Machop were doing together, to which Seda said that she tried to get Machop to go back to the Pokemon Center, but it wouldn't. So instead, she helped him train. Machop shows himself to be ready for the battle, and so Ash agrees that he and Machop will win this together. When they walk inside, Ash is once again ridiculed by Surge's subordinates. But Surge doesn't. Rather, he just points out that Machop hasn't evolved yet, to which Ash looks at his starter, before saying that it doesn't matter. The two of them are going to defeat Raichu and win. Lieutenant Surge smirks, before saying that they'll just have to see. Much to Ash's shock, though, the battle is called as a two-on-two. -two. Ash doesn't complain, though, because he's got another Pokemon in mind to use. So the battle begins, with Krabby facing off against Electabuzz. Seda questions why Ash sent out a Pokemon that was weak to Electro-types, but Brock explains that Ash and Krabby have trained for this battle. Electabuzz starts off with a Shockwave. However, Krabby is able to avoid with a brand new move, Dig. The crab then resurfaces, delivering a powerful blow to Electabuzz. Electabuzz then tries to attack with Ice Punch, but Krabby is able to defend itself with Harden before firing off a Water Gun. Electabuzz recoils back before firing off a Shockwave. This time, the attack strikes Krabby and does a lot of damage. It then attempts to strike with Thunder Punch. But Krabby defends once again with Harden, before it burrows underground with Dig. Lieutenant Surge doesn't have a problem with this, though, as he calls for Electabuzz to screech down into the hole. Sure enough, this forces Krabby to resurface, allowing Electabuzz to strike with another shockwave, followed by an ice punch. Ash asks Krabby if it can keep going, and the little crab nods, before digging underground once again. Lieutenant Surge calls for Electabuzz to screech once more, but just when it's about to, Krabby pops back up the same hole in order to strike. It then proceeds to finish off Electabuzz 
with a metal claw. Lieutenant Surge is pretty impressed by Krabby, and is about to send out Raichu, when Krabby falls unconscious right afterwards. It seems that Krabby was just barely able to hang in. So the battle is now a one-on-one. -on -one. The rematch between Machop and Raichu. Machop shadow boxes upon entry, revealing to Ash the new move and bullet punch. The two Pokemon then begin their battle, clashing with bullet punch and mega punch. The two connect blow after blow before Machop leaps back. It uses focus energy before going in with a low kick. This time, the attack does form on our damage. Lieutenant Surge calls for Raichu to use Thunderbolt, but Machop dodges by leaping backwards. Ash is surprised by this, having not even called for Machop to do so. Brock is also impressed, asking if Seda witnessed any of this when she trained Machop. Sheepishly, Seda says that this was all new. However, Brock raises an eyebrow at this, curious about her attitude. Raichu and Machop clash again, this time both striking with Low Kick and Mega Kick. However, Lieutenant Surge calls for Raichu to wrap it around its tail, which restricts the movements of the fighting type, allowing Raichu to use a point-blank Thunderbolt. It then tosses the zapped Machop to the side. Ash calls out to his starter to get back up, and the superpower Pokemon struggles. It looks at Lieutenant Surge, who smirks at him while Raichu taunts it to get back into the fight. Machop grits its teeth, before looking back to his trainer. Ash begins to look uncertain, as if he might lose. Suddenly, Machop is enveloped in a bright light. We cut back to the night before, with Lieutenant Surge and Seda training the small fighting type. As Machop is getting faster and stronger with his attacks, the lieutenant has him spar with his Electabuzz. The two Pokemon fight each other, while Lieutenant Surge calls for how the two need to improve in this fight. Electabuzz is about to strike with a Thunder Punch, but Machop catches it. Lieutenant Surge smiles, thinking that this is the moment. And yet nothing happens. He sighs, and Seda asks what's wrong. Lieutenant Surge says that he was sure all this training would lead to Machop's evolution into the much stronger Machoke, yet the runt was still a runt. Seda looks at Machop, before suggesting that maybe Machop doesn't want to evolve without Ash here. Lieutenant Surge thinks about this for a moment, before calling out to Machop, asking if this were true. Machop nods, which brings a smile to Lieutenant Surge's face as he calls it, a good soldier. The light around Machop dissipates, and the fighting type stands, now as a powerful Machoke. It flexes, showing off its new powerful physique. Ash is amazed by his starter's evolution, while on the opposite end, Lieutenant Surge just smiles. The two Pokemon get back to the battle, they clash with Bullet Punch and Mega Punch once again. Machoke then drops down before delivering a powerful low kick to Raichu's stomach. The electric Pokemon recoils before attempting to stab its tail into Machoke. Machoke pivots, allowing the tail to instead wrap around its arm. It then pulls, flinging Raichu across the battlefield. However, with Raichu still holding on, it's able to deliver a powerful Thunderbolt to Machoke. Both Pokemon fall to the ground, but they recover quickly. Raichu then goes in for another Mega Punch. However, Ash calls for a counter. Machoke takes the punch before delivering a powerful strike to Raichu that knocks it up into the air. Then, just before Raichu can do anything else, Machoke's hand begins to glow. With the glowing hand, Machoke grabs Raichu spins around and slams the mouse Pokemon into the ground with a powerful, vital throw. The battle is called there, and Machoke is declared the winner.
Ash races out onto the battlefield, immediately wrapping Machoke in a hug. The fighting type smiles, before playfully flipping Ash around, putting him in a brotherly headlock. Seda and Brock cheer for Ash, both happy he managed to win. Lieutenant Surge then approaches him. He tells him that Machoke is a good soldier, and through wanting to please his commander, that was why it evolved. He then presents Ash with the Thunder Badge, earning Ash his third badge overall. Ash goes back over to Seda and Brock. The two of them are very happy to see him win, and Ash thanks Seda for the training she did with Machoke. However, he is confused, as he thought she wasn't much of a battler. He asks if she really did all that training herself. Seda discreetly glances over to Lieutenant Surge, who simply holds up a finger to his mouth. Seda then smiles, before stating that she did what she could, but Machoke was the one who did all the hard work. The trio then say goodbye to Lieutenant Surge, before leaving. The group decides to stay in Vermilion City, wanting to figure out where to go next before they head to their next destination. While there, they watch a cruise ship by the name of the SS Anne take off on its maiden voyage. Now normally Ash would get on this boat, however Team Rocket isn't here to give him the tickets in the first place, so he's out of luck. This also means that there's no giant Pokemon Island or anything of the sort. Instead. When the group decides to head to Saffron City, they travel on foot. Along the way, Ash trains and battles a few trainers. But nothing really major ends up happening. So, they reach Saffron City without any problems. As the group approaches the gym, a man runs up behind them and begins to warn them, telling them to stay away before running off. Confused, Ash chooses to go inside anyway. At first, the trio find the gym to be empty. However, after running into a door, they soon find a room full of people practicing telekinesis. As a man confronts them, strangely enough, Seda's Abra pops out of its Pokeball. The man stops, noticing the small psychic Pokemon. His mood slightly shifts after this, and he becomes slightly more corrigible. Abra floats over to the people practicing telekinesis, and even the man shows his own abilities, as he's able to slightly bend a spoon without even touching it. As Ash asks for a gym battle, Seda chooses to stay with Abra, feeling that the psychic Pokemon may want to learn with the others. The group splits from there, with Ash and Brock being the ones to go and meet Sabrina. Upon entry, a little girl appears, and sends the man who brought them running with telekinetic force. Ash then challenges the little girl to an official match. The girl agrees, under the caveat that if Ash loses, that he and his friend have to be her friends and play with her. Ash finds this to be a very strange rule, but agrees to it. Suddenly the doors close on their own, and lights come on to reveal that the little girl sitting on the lap of a much older woman. The older woman states that this will be a one-on-one -on -one Pokemon battle, so the two send out Machoke and Abra. Brock immediately wonders why Ash would choose Machoke. But Ash exclaims that he's sure his number one partner will be able to take on this battle. And sure enough, Machoke is able to do a lot better than expected. When Abra teleports out of the, the way of an attack, Ash is able to call for Bullet Punch, which strikes right when Abra reappears. Ash cheers on his partner, exclaiming how training with, Sa with Seda's Abra really helped it learn to combat this. Sabrina gets annoyed by this and so her eyes grow red. Suddenly, Abra is enveloped in a blinding light, before it evolves into Kadabra. The battle be then becomes far more difficult for Ash, as Kadabra's confusion and psychic do heavy damage to the superpower Pokemon. 
Machoke isn't even able to land a hit against Kadabra now. With a final psychic, Machoke is defeated. The little girl giggles happily before bringing up how Ash promised the two of them would be her friends. Then in a flash, Ash and Brock are gone. Meanwhile in the other room, Seda is watching Abra learn alongside the other psychics. It learns rather quickly, however its own power output is still nowhere near that of the others. Seda wonders if she can help Abra improve in any way at all. Suddenly Abra's attention seems to be grabbed by something else. It floats over to Seda, and she asks her partner what's wrong. The man from earlier, who had come running in to the room moments prior, notices Abra's distress. He calls Ash and Brock fools, before telling Seda that her friends have lost. And that's where we'll be leaving things for right now. So what do you guys think? Were you surprised by who got Squirtle in the end? How do you feel about Lieutenant Surge helping Machop grow stronger? And how do you think Ash and Brock will be able to escape Sabrina's clutches? Let me know in the comments below, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye.